Hi guys, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. I can't really see you, but I'm imagining you. I can see you in here. That's the important thing. Today, we're going to be doing a simple exercise that you can do at home to understand your strengths and your weaknesses when it comes to pronunciation, or more specifically, British English pronunciation, and how you can turn those weaknesses into your strengths. So don't go anywhere, because it's going to be a belter. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. So today, guys, we're going to be looking at a pangram. A pangram. So a pangram usually is a sentence or a piece of text which contains all of the letters of the alphabet. Like this one. When zombies arrive quickly, facts judge Pat. Or the five boxing wizards jump quickly. And one more for fun, pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. <laughs> so that's a pangram, but today we're looking at a phonemic pangram, which is a bit different, and it's not about letters, it's about sounds. So a phonemic pangram is a piece of text which contains all of the phonemes, or all of the sounds, in a language. And in this particular language, English, we have 44 sounds which you may already know. If you don't know those sounds, I recommend you check out the video I did a couple of weeks ago where I went through all of the vowels and all of the consonants of the English language. So I always use a phonemic pangram in my first lesson with a student who wants to work on their pronunciation. This is the way that I can tell what level they're currently at. Which phonemes are they able to articulate well and which ones need a bit more work. As well as that, we can use this pangram to identify areas of connected speech, rhythm, stress, and intonation that the student could work on in order to sound like a more natural, fluent speaker of the language. So this lesson today is gonna to help you in three main ways. Firstly, you're going to be able to practice your articulation of the English phonemes, and by recording yourself reading this pangram, you can either send it to your teacher or listen to it yourself in order to discover your weaknesses. Which sounds are you articulating well? Which sounds need to be improved a little bit? And finally, it's going to help your listening skills. So pronunciation and listening are really, really closely linked. You could say that it's impossible to have a good pronunciation if you don't have good listening skills, because you need to be able to hear the different sounds to be able to produce them well on a consistent basis. For example, if you can't hear the difference between feast and fist, you're probably not going to be able to produce these two different sounds consistently. So that's the pangram. It's gonna be really, really useful for you. Before we begin, in just a moment, I'm going to tell you very quickly about the sponsor of today's video, italki, italki. Now, italki is incredible, not only because I am a teacher on there, but because they have thousands of native and non-native teachers of the English language. So you can learn with a native speaker like me, or you can learn with someone who speaks your language. On top of that, you can be assured that on italki, you will find a teacher who meets your needs because they have teachers who specialize in pronunciation, in grammar and functional English, or in exam preparation. Italki is also very, very affordable. I was looking down the list of teachers the other day and I saw some that were less than $10 an hour for an English lesson. It's a lot cheaper than your traditional English lessons. It's also incredibly convenient, convenient, because you can learn from the comfort of your own home. You just book a lesson, download Skype, and connect with your one-to-one -one tutor on there. And because you are one of our subscribers, after you book your first lesson using the link down in the description box, italki will give you $10 of credits to spend on your next lesson. So enjoy that, but let's get back to the video. Okay, are we ready for the pangram? So what you can do is listen to me, read it first, and then after, you can read it yourself and record yourself. If you have a really good ear, and you were able to distinguish different sounds like e and i, or uh and a, ah, what you should do is listen to that recording back and try to compare it with mine so that you can see which sounds you are articulating fully and which ones you maybe need to tweak a little bit. 
If, on the other hand, you want some feedback on your pronunciation, what you can do is send that recording to your teacher and ask him or her to give you some feedback. You can even book a lesson with me. My website link is down in the description box and I will give you some feedback. But let's get going with the pangram. This one is called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And it's about a naughty little shepherd boy who was very bored. He was bored stiff. He was bored out of his mind and he decided to tell a fib. And this fib ended up costing him his life. There was once a poor shepherd boy who used to watch his flocks in the fields next to a dark forest near the foot of a mountain. One hot afternoon, he thought up a good plan to get some company for himself and also have a little fun. Raising his fist in the air, he ran down to the village shouting, Wolf! Wolf! As soon as they heard him, the villagers all rushed from their homes full of concern for his safety, and two of his cousins even stayed with him for a short while. This gave the boy so much pleasure that a few days later he tried exactly the same trick again, and once more he was successful. However, not long after, a wolf that had just escaped from the zoo was looking for a change from its usual diet of chicken and duck. So overcoming its fear of being shot, it actually did come out from the forest and began to threaten the sheep. Racing down to the village, the boy of course cried out even louder than before. Wolf! Wolf! Unfortunately, as all the villagers were convinced that he was trying to fool them a third time, they told him, go away and don't bother us again. And so the wolf had a feast. Yummy, yummy, yummy. What a silly boy. So now it's your turn to record your version of the pangram. Record it, listen to it back, compare it to mine, and make some notes. Try to think which sounds am I articulating well, and which ones do I want to improve. Okay, how was that? I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's difficult to record yourself and probably even more difficult to listen to yourself back. I always hate hearing myself speak in Spanish. It sounds bloody awful, but it's a useful exercise. And if you do have a teacher who is willing to help you with your pronunciation, send your recording to them and they can give you some feedback. Okay guys, that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you found this pangram useful. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Write me a comment and tell me what you found out about your own pronunciation. Were you able to identify some weaknesses? And if so, what were they? And also tell me in the comments what other pronunciation-based lessons you would like me to make for you. Thank you very much for watching and see you again soon for another lesson.